Hey y'all, today on Restless Chipotle, we are making the ultimate comfort food. It was popular when I was a kid back in the 60s, and I'm talking about Salisbury steak. It's made out of ground beef, so it's budget friendly. It cooks all day in the slow cooker, so it's super easy and your family is gonna love it. So I'm gonna sit back and y'all head over to the kitchen and see how it's done. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ground beef and we're gonna add it to a large bowl. And to that, we're going to add the breadcrumbs onion soup mix, and the milk. And we're just going to mix that together. And you know, the best way to do it is always with your hands. mix it until you're relatively sure that the seasoning is all the way through evenly in the meat and I really think that this is. I'm seeing the onions pretty much everywhere. That's always a good way to tell. All right. Now what I'm going to do is put down a piece of parchment paper to put, protect my service and to protect my meat and I'm going to separate it into eight roughly fourth of a pound size uh, balls. And um, it's helpful if you wanna get it completely evenly to use a scale. Um, I'm gonna do it this way and then if it looks like I can't get it even, I'll get the scale. But I think I can probably eyeball it. We'll see. You just don't wanna have one that's like uh, 5.0 and one that's 7.3 because it just won't cook properly. All right, so now what you're going to do is just form this into a kind of a thick patty because remember we're slow cooking these and um, they don't need to cook super fast so they can be thick and juicy and you just want to form that without packing it down too much. It's going to end up being about the size of the palm of your hand if you, I don't know, I don't have big hands, but I don't have tiny hands either. And there we go. We've got our eight patties. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set these aside for just a minute and get a bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up the cream of mushroom soup with the beef bouillon. really not sure that we need um, two cans but if you're gonna serve like mashed potatoes or something with it the extra gravy is really nice so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and use two cans if that's not a, a thing for you if you're not gonna do that then one can is probably sufficient about a tablespoon of the beef bouillon in here and that would be a scant tablespoon you just want to mix it so that it's well mixed 
Um, you don't need to take a lot of trouble with it. The remaining amount of bullion, if you're seeing little dots and stuff in there, is going to melt off um, while it's cooking. So, so once you've got that, you can just set that aside because we're gonna, not going to need that just yet. So I've been heating up my multi-cooker and this is where you're going to really see why I love this thing. Um, you can sear the meat and cook it in the same pan. I don't need to go to the stove, sear the meat in the frying pan and then come back and uh, put it in the slow cooker. I can do it all in one. So while we're, gonna, while we're working with the uh, patties, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here about a tablespoon. And I'm gonna move that around a little bit so it can get nice and warm. And then I'm gonna move this aside again so that uh, we work while we work on the beef. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the flour in the plate and you don't, this doesn't need a whole lot of flour. It just helps the meat to brown. There's so much salt and things in the um, Lipton onion soup mix that you don't need a lot of salt in here. But what I do like to use is a little Creole seasoning for spice. This is not, um, I didn't show this in the recipe ingredients because it's such an optional step, but I really like a little heat. So I'm gonna put that in there. Mix that in well. And then I'm just gonna dredge the patties in there, in the flour. very quickly. Now normally I would be putting them straight into the, the um, frying pan, the hot frying pan or the hot surface to um, sear, but right now um, I'm doing it this way so that I can show you the whole process. <music> this flour and put this plate up and I'll be right back. Okay, if you don't have one of these kind of cookers, uh, you're gonna have to do it, heat your frying pan up, preferably like a cast iron. Heat it up on the stove till it's good and hot and the oil's good and hot. And then you're gonna put the patties in and listen for that sizzle. and then flip and brown them on the other side. Go ahead and take a quick look and then flip it over. Be careful you don't burn your fingers. And that, my friends, is that. They're all seared and nice and kind of golden. We're gonna let them sear on the other side and then we're gonna put the gravy on them and let them go. It's been about a minute and a half and I just wanna check and make sure that the bottoms are brown and they are nice and crispy, nice crust on there. So I'm going to take my mushroom cream mushroom soup mix and I'm just gonna put it right on top. You all know we all forget things, right? I forgot to add the water to the um, mushroom soup mix and I started to put it on, but um, I'm just gonna add the water. Now, if you want this really um, not very thick, add more water. If you want it a little bit thicker, add less water. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup, but I probably am only gonna use about a little over half a cup, if that. And that will be just fine for me. 
and just pour that right over. If you like mushrooms, which my fam most of my family does not, you can slice those right over the top um, and it will be delicious. I'm going to lift these up a little bit to let the, uh, the gravy kind of flow underneath. And that's only because I'm extra. I just, you know, like to play around with it as much as possible. All right. And then I'm going to set it to slow cook on high for four, or on, sorry, on low for four hours. I'll put the top on it. And we'll come back and take a look uh, in about four hours and see what we've got. Okay, y'all, it's time. I'm gonna take the cover off. Mm, look, you can see the meat and it's been simmering in that gravy. It's so rich and thick and buttery, creamy goodness right there, beefy and so inexpensive and so easy to make. I mean, you just can't get better than this. This was a retro vintage favorite for a reason, and that's because it's inexpensive, it's family friendly, and it's just so easy to make, especially in the slow cooker. I'm just gonna add a little parsley for a little green. And then let's see what we've got. Now, if you don't use a spoon to get it out like I didn't, you still want to go in there and get this gravy. It's just so thick and rich, delicious. Here it is, y'all. Here's our finished Salisbury steak. And you can see why it was so popular in the 60s. Creamy, rich gravy, delicious meat and seasonings, oniony, creamy goodness. Um, since it's done in the slow cooker, it's super easy. And this is fast. It cooks on low for just four hours. So let's see how it tastes. It's so good. I could sit here and eat this whole thing. And I don't mean like this whole thing. I mean like the whole thing in the pot over there is delicious. The meat stays real tender and juicy because it's slow cooked. Really, really good. I hope you're gonna try this recipe. Serve it with mashed potatoes or um, a thick slice of bread to get all that gravy because it's, that's like the good part. And, um, I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and head on over to Restless Chipotle and take a look at it and, uh, and see what you think. I'll talk to y'all later. Love ya. Bye bye. This is, uh, it's, I know, no absolutely.